This is a computer that I've been building for the last three months. And not only is everything from the box to the boards designed and made by me from scratch, but it operates only using mechanical switches, also known as relays, which is the same way that computers worked in the 1960s. And because it's mechanical, it sounds like this. But to understand how it works, how I built it, and how we got here, we'll need to go back about three months. Okay, fine, it's not really three months ago. I forgot to record three months ago, so I just changed my shirt, and we're gonna pretend it's three months ago, okay? I recently watched this video by Veritasium about the evolution of computing, and in it, he describes how the thing that runs our computers went from relays to vacuum tubes to transistors. And there's a really interesting clip in there that I wanna show, but he won't respond to me. Even though I emailed him twice, so I'm gonna show the clip anyways and call it uh, fair use, I guess. And if you want to add two numbers together, so two is this, three is this, right? When you want to calculate it, you just hit the go button down here. <laughs> you just saw a calculator that uses only relays to calculate. Whoa, what the heck is a relay anyways? A relay is just an electromagnet, which is like a magnet that you can turn on and off next to a switch. So when you give power to the electromagnet, it flips the switch without the two systems ever needing to touch. And then they realized that these parts are like the relay's privates and they didn't want it to be naked, so they put a box around it. And that's why my relays look like this. If you wanna know more about where relays are today, go to this video. Oh, okay. Meaning you could hear every bit as it flipped back and forth. You can literally hear what the computer's thinking. And this is initially what got me fascinated with relay computers. And the reason that you don't see any actual numbers on there is because they're represented in binary, which we'll get to later. But basically it's just another way of showing numbers. Anyways, I wanna make something very similar to this, but with a little bit more style. So I drew up some diagrams and I got to work. So when I'm making a project, I like to know roughly how much it's going to cost. And so I made this really cool slideshow to kind of guide us through that. There's going to be eight boards and each of them will have different numbers of relays. And overall, it should be about 61 relays, which is a lot now that I say it out loud, but uh, it'll be OK. It'll just take a lot of time. And so I found a pack of 10 on Amazon. And so when you add all those numbers together, it'll, it'll be a 70, $77. I don't have $77. I did find 50 relays on AliExpress for only $35, which is a little bit more in my price range. But the issue is it'll take like up to two weeks to get here. So, so I patiently waited two weeks for the relays to get here. The relays just came in last night. There's 50 of them. They smell really bad. Like, like whenever I touch them, like my hands reek and they just reek in general. They, they smell like the most manufactured thing. But other than that, it's time to get started to make eight boards. So I've made uh, five boards out of the eight. They fit together like this. So you can see that these top leads go through the inputs and outputs, and then the middle is what does all the calculating. Um, since I do need to make three more and it's getting a little bit monotonous, uh, this part's just kind of about pushing through so I can get to the rest of the project. this yet but this is what will be hopefully the sequencing system for the calculator this video makes no sense let's fix that there's a lot of components in my computer that need to remember something like on my inputs I need to press a button for an input and I need the computer to remember that I pressed that button I want to be able to press a button and see that the light turns on and that it stays on 
In other words, I don't want that button to do this. I want it to do this. But how did it do that? Here's how it did that. If you design a circuit around a relay like this, if we provide voltage to that electromagnet, then the relay is able to actually power itself through its own switch, meaning it stays on even after the button stops being pressed. In effect, the relay remembered that it was turned on. So we press the button and that relay turns on, but eventually we're gonna have to turn it off. And you can't just apply ground to the other side of the electromagnet to turn it off because that creates a short and that can blow up our power supply. What we need to do is we need to cut the positive voltage that's being fed into the relay with another relay. And that's how we clear all of the inputs. Now the same thing happens with the output, except instead of us pressing a button to turn on an output, the computer tells that output to turn on after we press the calculate button. And there are certain situations where the outputs will need to be turned off. But how do we do that? We need to clear those relays before turning them on. So what we do is we have the calculate button activate a process in steps. First, we clear the outputs, then we connect the output boards to the rest of the computer so it can load in the output information, then it disconnects it from the rest of the computer so we can put in different inputs. But that's very difficult because we need to have it do all of those things in time with one button. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. Okay, so I've spent a very long time figuring this out, but I finally have it. How it works is this acts as the, the clock. So I don't know if that was intelligible at all, but I figured it out, so now it goes, right? So this is a very important circuit that I've just designed. What it does is it takes a clock input, meaning high voltage, low voltage, high voltage, low voltage, on a steady timeline. It uses one relay to sound out the command, and that first high voltage opens up the channel of one of the second relay. I am not explaining this very well, so I'm gonna try again. This is a simplified schematic of what's happening. Instead of having four stages, this schematic has two. And these lights turn on when the wire that it's attached to experiences five volts. We turn the clock to five volts and the relay that it's attached to latches on just like our data storage latches on. Then when the clock is low, a second signal is sent through that relay that just latched on to latch on the third relay, which is the second stage. Now both lights are on. That's how I designed the sequencing circuit. And to make it four LEDs, I just did it twice. So that's all great, but now I need to make a clock. So making a clock is harder than I thought. As it turns out, it's really hard to make a clock for relays. And you can see why in this video, but basically I can't use a quartz crystal because I don't use transistors in my relay computer. So I was at a standstill as to what to do. And as I've been working on this project, I've been uploading shorter videos to YouTube and TikTok. And one name kept popping up in the comments. It's a guy who built a way bigger and way better relay computer than me. His name is Paula, I, Paul Law. His name is Paul Law. Now Paul Law, our Lord and Savior, gave us a 16 episode series on how to make a relay computer clock. Now I'm not gonna watch a 16 episode series on how to make a relay computer clock, but I'll watch the first two episodes. And in the second episode, he gives us this list. These are all the main ways that we could make a clock for our computer. Now two of them are out because they were never in relay computers and I'm making a relay computer. So I tried to make this complicated capacitor relay circuit that he made in the video and that, that's what he went with so I went with it and I couldn't get it to work. I don't know why, I didn't really understand it. I mean, I, I probably could have made it work if I spent enough time, but I didn't really get it in the first place. So I decided, you know what's way cooler than that stupid option? A motor, that's right. I'm making a motorized computer. So that's what I did. I've, I've modeled out this um, to hold the motor and the switch and the board, uh, and I think this is the one. Okay, I've printed it, and this is not, in fact, the one. The holes don't really line up, and the switch didn't fit and there's a problem with the board and I had to list out all the issues. Okay, so I've made this design and I've had to tweak it a lot, but I think this is the one. And here's the second model. Doesn't look so new, so improved. So first we put in the switch. All right, so I've designed and printed this cam, this here. 
So this is this is what the rest of the computer is going to receive. That's excellent. So at this point, I've finished the computer and the thing that runs the computer, but I couldn't help but feel like it was missing something. I mean, the whole point of the computer is that it makes noise, so it should probably make a noise when it's done with the calculation. And that's why I decided to add a bell using this circuit that I designed. And just like that, the electronics are done. Wow, that was so easy. It didn't even take two months for you. And who's ready to be done soldering? Well, that's great, because now it's time to make the... So after three long days in the garage, the woodworking part is pretty much done. So at this point, all I have to do to finish this entire project is wire the computer into the top of the box and then glue the top of the box onto the box. And it's a really weird feeling because I've been working on this for something like four months, which I think is the longest I've ever spent on something that I designed. And the fact that I'm almost done on one hand is kind of sad because I don't know what I'll do with my time. But on the other hand, it's kind of freeing because I know I'll get to work on other things that I've been planning. And there's a third part of me that's just really excited to finish the project because I'll get to upload this video and see where it goes. All right. So I put all the buttons and the lights. Look at that. Isn't that, isn't that incredible? One issue, this back door that closes runs into the switch. I mean, I just cleaned up the whole garage, but we have to route out a little section here so that it doesn't run into the back of the switch. Remember kids, always wear flip-flops and shorts while you're woodworking. So I've got the head of the thing set up like this so that when I put these in, I'll know the right length of the wire for when it eventually does go in the box. So at this point, I basically just had to wire everything from the computer into the components of the top of the box. And I'll spare you from watching all of it because it's pretty boring, but basically it was not going as well as I thought it would. It's not going as well as I thought it would. A lot of things kept breaking and it became this repetitive process of taking everything and putting it in the box and then realizing something was broken. So I had to take it out of the box and fix it and then put everything back in the box and take it out and put it in and take it out until finally I had a functioning computer. Also, I forgot to take a video of me gluing the top onto the box, but I felt like it was important. So pretend that this is me gluing the top onto the box. And it's done. All right. If you hear rustling, that's my cat, Poe. He's uh, just being a cat. You're gonna, you're gonna be there the whole time. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, so the computer is finally done. I really like how it turned out. I think it looks really good. I think the labeling turned out really well. Now, before we go any further from like a continuity standpoint, a lot of you will probably notice that I did get a new shirt. Uh, it's plain. It's a plain white t-shirt. Do you like it? I thought you would. So to use the computer, first we'll turn it on. Now, keen viewers, will probably notice that there is no screen on this computer, and that's because the way we communicate with it is really the most raw form 
that you could talk to a computer, which is through binary. So when I'm putting in a number, I'm not gonna just say 12. I have to use binary to put in that number. And future me is gonna explain how binary works right now. Binary is just another way of showing numbers, and we do so through zeros and ones. Here, for instance, is a four-bit binary number. Starting from the right, each of these positions represents one, two, four, and eight, respectively. For every one in our binary number, we take the position that it represents and add it to the final result. And that's how we get our number. This was a super quick explanation, but it'll make sense more as we go through the video. Wow, that was a great explanation, future me. So now that we know binary, uh, let's try and add two numbers. We'll say 25 and 14. So that's 16 plus eight plus one, and then eight plus four plus two. And if we press enter, what we get is 32 plus four plus two plus one, which is 39, and that is correct. Let's try and add another two numbers. Let's say 16 plus four. So we do 16 and we do four, and then we press enter. And the result in binary is, well, now we do mental math, 16 plus four, that's 20. So our calculator has told us that 16 plus four is 20. Whoa, that's so useful. So we know how the data storage works, the input and the output. We learned that earlier, but how does it actually add? Pretend you have a little guy with three inputs, and his job is to count the number of inputs that are on and translate that into a two-bit binary number. So if any two of these inputs experience five volts, the output will look like this, one, zero. Or if only one of them is on, the output will be zero, one. And if all three are on, the output is one, one. In this two-bit binary output, the digit on the right, the digit that only represents one is the actual output of the adder. In other words, it's one of those green lights on the bottom of the box. The digit on the left, which represents two, is actually an output to the next little guy. That's right, you have more than one little guy. In fact, you have eight little guys. Each of these little guys is a full adder. Now, each little guy full adder corresponds to one green light at the bottom of this box. There's also a ninth LED that we'll get to later. Now that we understand the outputs, let's talk about the inputs. And for the sake of simplicity, instead of having having eight full adders, meaning an eight-bit calculator, I'm gonna represent this with just three full adders and a three-bit calculator. And that means that there are six inputs in our calculator, two ones, two twos, and two fours. The inputs are wired in this way, where each full adder handles two digits of the same value. So this row is our first number and this row is our second. Now let's try adding one plus one. Our first adder sees two inputs active and outputs one zero. This first one goes to the second adder, which detects one active input and outputs zero one, which is linked to our two binary output. So one plus one equals two, but now let's try something a little more complicated. Let's try seven plus two. So this one essentially just gets carried down. The full adder that it's connected to just outputs 0, 1, which carries down into the first digit of our final result. But now it gets a little bit more complicated. These twos go into the same full adder, which outputs 1, 0. That then carries into our third full adder, which has two active inputs because of the four at the top. That means that this full adder outputs 1, 0 as well. Remember how earlier I was talking about that ninth bit? This is the equivalent. Instead of this left digit outputting to another full adder, it just outputs to its own LED. It's called the carry out. And if you're curious, this is the relay diagram for the full adder in case you wanna make your own. Wow, yet another great explanation. You'll also notice that we can do subtract mode. Now to do subtract mode, all the computer is doing is it's taking these inputs and it inverts them. So every zero is a one and every one is a zero. And then it adds one. To this input. Now to be honest, I really don't know why that works, but it does. So if we do say seven minus four, we'll get three. Or if we do 25 minus 14 and we get 11. That's pretty cool. Also there's a bell function and it sounds okay, but all of the lights flash whenever the bell rings. I don't think that's good for the computer. I think I did something wrong in the wiring. So we're just gonna leave the bell off. So yeah, this has been the demonstration of the computer. Now, if you're wondering why I used perf boards instead of PCBs, which I could have just ordered online and then had shipped to my house and it would have been faster and more reliable and more repairable and probably cheaper to, um, no, yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. That's a good question. In all honesty, it's because I really wanted to feel like I made my own computer. You know, I, I designed the boards and then I made them from scratch, not 
ordering anything custom. And that's how my computer works. You know, it takes the inputs, it runs them through the adders, and then when you press enter, it kind of refreshes that bottom layer of outputs using the motor board that I designed. Did anyone follow you here? Okay, good. It's time that I tell you two big secrets about my relay calculator. Secret number one, not all of this stuff is from the 1960s. Blue LEDs definitely didn't exist before the 1960s and transistors didn't. So the power supply definitely would be dated after the 1960s. But don't, don't tell anyone. And the second secret is that it doesn't actually fully work. When I was putting it together, I don't know what I did. The 128 output bit just doesn't turn on. Like it just doesn't work. And I, I tried to fix it, but it's like too deep in the boards to be able to fix. Don't be a snitch. Oh, and one more thing, look at me. I'm literally just a little boy. So don't be mean to me, please. Like if you notice in the beginning of that montage that that one relay switched around for no reason, don't comment, hey you idiot, that relay switched around for no reason. Cause I know, okay, I know. I guess what I'm saying is treat me like I'm your nephew, okay? You wouldn't be mean to your nephew, right? Right, Tom? And if you are mean to me, I will delete your YouTube account. Do put corrections though. If like something's wrong, you can correct it because because I want to know that. And that's it. That's the video. This has been my most complicated project so far, but I learned a lot. I didn't show it, but I learned how to panel two pieces of wood together. Um, I learned a lot of stuff about woodworking actually. I learned that sometimes maybe I should just order PCBs instead of trying to make my own circuits. And while we're talking about this project being complicated, if you have any questions, I want you to ask them in the comments below. Because even though I explained a lot about this project, there's just so much more stuff that I couldn't go over. Otherwise, this video would be way too long. Also, since you did just watch me ramble for over 20 minutes, you legally have to subscribe. I, hey, I don't make the rules, you know? And you might notice that this is only my second video. And if you watch my first, I'd say there was a pretty big jump in quality, and I'm proud of that. I'm proud of this video. But that's all I had to say about this project. So, see you in the next video. Okay, I almost forgot. I generally like to make like my logo and like customize that logo to that project. So I'm taking the IBM logo and I made um, this stencil that I can spray paint onto and it kind of looks like the IBM logo.